Hey guys, um, this is going to be my entry video into the Bandai group build. Um, I did say to Papa Dad I was going to get started on it, and I have actually made my mind up that I'm going to get started on it tonight. Now that I've got my World War One group build out of the way. Um, and incidentally, I just had a quick online chat with Len, and he's very, very happy at the results that I've made. So Len, thanks ever so much, buddy. And uh, I can confirm that I will be doing the Bristol Fighter for the World War One group build sometime next year. Um, as I'm going to do, I will upload an inbox review and entry vid. All right. I thoroughly enjoyed the last one, and uh, having spoken to you, then I have made my mind up that um, on your advice, I'll do the Bristol Fighter. So anyway. I'm detracting away from what I'm doing this video for. <laughs> so guys, um, as I say, this is going to be my entry video for the Bandai group build. Uh, I know it's due to finish in December. Whether I get this done or not is by the by. But I did make a promise and I'm going to keep it. Uh, I know I've got two other possible builds that are going to be going on. I've got the M group build. And then obviously we've got the Pixel Plastic Leopard group build, um, which starts fairly soon as well. But uh, my other focus is going to be this one. Um, I've got quite a stash of uh, Bandai Star Wars kits, which I actually collected over last year. And there's a few more which have been released, I must admit I've got my eye on. Um, but this is going to be my first. Uh, I've seen various modellers building this, uh, I know a few of them on the ISIN forum did them in different colour schemes as a what if, and uh, obviously like Lenny and RTB models did a what if scheme as well, which was quite good, I must admit, I really, I really enjoyed that one then, I must admit. Um, so I've decided I'm going to go for this ATST as well, but I shall be doing it as the movie version. Um, I might not be using the base that supply with the kit. I might well use one of my own, possibly. I don't know. I'll have to sort of weigh it up at the moment, but we will see. So, um, as I say, I've heard that this this kit, these kits are fantastic to build. Um, having looked at the Millennium Falcon, the detail in it is absolutely insane. You definitely wouldn't need any aftermarket with these kits, I'll tell you. And they are so easy to put together, apparently. They're virtually a snap together kit. Um, you don't need any use any glue, and it doesn't take you that long to build them. But I mean, I'm going to take your time on this one um, uh, because I shall be doing it in your finished scheme and obviously doing a bit of weathering on it. So there you go. Anyway, as you can see here on the actual box, which is supplied by Bandai, which I actually had to get overseas via eBay. So that's your only source you're going to get hold of the Bandai kit because they're not licensed in this country or the United States, sadly. Uh, which is a great shame, but there you go. Um, as I say, they're fantastic looking kits. Uh, I've seen various reviews on people that have done them, um, including Phil Flory, um, some of the guys in the ISM forum, Mike Cohen, who's done a few, um, many other people as well. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to put my hat in the ring and have a go at one myself um, and see how it goes. Um, as you can see, you've got the box art illustration, which is taken from Still of Empire Strikes Back. Uh, was it the last, the Je no, Return of the Jedi? Yeah, because these were featured in Return of the Jedi. Uh, and as you remember, they were actually trying to get through to the powerhouse. And um, it, it basically had the uh, little Wookiees or whatever they were. I can't remember what they were. Little furry creatures. Hijack one, as well as old uh, Chewie himself. Um... Hence why you got the little figure of Chewie in with the kit. Um, it's in 148 scale, so that's a nice size. Um, as I say, it's called the ACST, or as it's better well known, the Imperial All-Terrain Scout Transport Walker. That's a mouthful. Try saying that when you're pissed. <laughs> um, beautiful box art illustrations, as I say, taken from the film. Okay, on the side of the box here... You've got the illustration of the assembled kit, and it does look extremely impressive. And then it's on the supply stand, you see there. And again, the box art illustration on the side. Um, the kit number, if you want to get hold of one, and I will grab one fast because they're going fast on eBay, 
is 0194869. Okay, and if you want to freeze frame that, by all means do, so you can get the kit number. All right, and um, then you've got more illustrations of the assembled kit on the other side as well, as you can see there. And it does look, as I say, impressive. You can do it with the rubber ray stripes on it. I'm not. There's your base, and there's your figure that comes with the kit itself. Okay. And then you get the two drivers inside of the Imperial Guard. Okay. All right, let's open the box up. Okay, and first off, you got the instruction sheet. Okay, then we'll get the box out of the way for a minute. Uh, as you can see is the photograph the assembled kit on the front and then a few steals from the Return of the Jedi at the bottom there and obviously because it's a Chinese mate this is a Chinese instructions so, or Japanese wherever it is but, uh, as you can see it's made in Japan licensed by uh, Disney who's part of Lucasfilm and uh, made by Bandai all right it's a big sort of fold out pamphlet so it's very, very easy to sort of interpret. First off, you've got your sprue trees of all the kit with the base and the actual ATST itself, as you can see there. Okay. First stage. And the way I like the, the thing I like about the instructions is the little tip at the top there, and as you're going through, you can see which stage you're at with the kit at the very top here which is a good good thing to do so they make instructions very simple and easy to follow as you can see there first off you've got the base as you can see here and it all clicks into place but as I say one modeler said you've got to bear in mind and study these carefully because if you get it all wrong it's never the kit's never going to assemble it together properly and if you get it wrong you can't undo it so you really have got to concentrate when you're building this kit, okay? As you can see there, you've got all the other apartments with some of the wires and the electronics which go on the base, etc. and the mechanisms, which means you should be at stage two at the end of that process, which is this bit here. Next, you go on to the actual legs themselves, as you can see here, which are all the various assembly stages, okay? And the good thing is, even with the instructions, is it goes three to one, three to two. Uh, sorry, three to one, which is this stage, and then three to two. Okay, so it's very easy and precise and complex to say. And as I say, stage up there should have the leg assembled, and then the other leg assembled on stage six. So you get stage five down here. Again, putting the final mechanisms on. Okay, and then obviously fitting the foot, putting the foot together again in mechanical foot, as you can see here. Add that to the actual leg, etc. More mechanisms again, which obviously is a knee joint or whatever it is that goes on. And then obviously it should be at stage seven. Okay, and then once you've done the other leg, you then fit the, pop, the pod at the bottom here to the legs. And you should be standing like so okay next process is the assembly of the actual cockpit itself now what i am going to do is possibly paint the interior first before assembling the cockpit as well as the figures all right now i have heard that once you get it buttoned up you're not going to see anything but to me i know i've done it and it's there that's it so you then put the bottom base onto the actual cockpit front um Aperture goes on with the vision ports, back goes on, front goes on, off to stage nine. Okay, bear with us. Once you got onto stage nine, the cockpit section should be done. Um, just got the upper lid with the access hatch, side armour goes on, gun port goes on. A few of the electronics underneath the cockpit go on. You can either have the visors shut or open. I'm going to keep them open. Okay. Um, and then going on to the assembly of the, the actual guns, which are step 10. Okay. Um, showing you the assembly of the actual gun breech and mechanism there. You fit that onto the side. 
then put the cockpit down control panel onto the legs and the body and oh actually sorry I jumped a bit here you got the actual front laser gun to assemble first <laughs> it says easy to follow instructions not just cocks it up <laughs> what am I like and then put the other gun on obviously put the um, mechanism on the other side and it's showing you how to fit that together put it onto the main leg stand you've got your assembled ATST you can either put the run gun ray strikes in or not I'm not going to bother and then fit it to the assembled base if you should want to use it and then that's your finished kit okay um, now there is a sort of a guide color guide on the back here um, if you want to paint it um, I don't know as I will I, th I think probably what I'm going to do is actually styler as the whole lot and then go over with the grey just to give it that shadow effect as it were and then obviously you've got the illustrations of the interior and then there's one of old Chewie himself okay so that's basically that so simply easy and follow except I just got it wrong <laughs> right I won't take the bits out of the box um, this is the foot and leg mechanisms as you can see here um, detail on them is absolutely exceptional as you can see beautifully crisp and clear there's not one bit of flash and it looks as though they're very easy to cut off the sprues as well and then obviously you've got the uh, cockpit section here you've got the familiar front as you can see here nice and clear again no flash and some nice surface detail to weather up on there as well and i love the detail on the actual leg mechanisms as well beautifully caught and even on the back here look at the detail on that panel absolutely gorgeous well, that's the first screw with two screws there and then you got the panels for the actual cockpit and even on the interior Look at the detail with the panel lines and the actual side walls. It is gorgeous. There's a big potential for weathering and detail painting on there. So I am going to take my time and effort on that. And again, you've got the bottom of the, you've got the top of the roof and the bottom base. I mean, look at the detail again. It's absolutely superb. It really is, guys. Okay. And another section of the cockpit there, which you can see. Beautiful detail. And then there's your back wall. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Really, really well defined. And then you've got the front there with a the control panel. And again, you could dry brush that and basically put a wash on it just to give it that detail if you should so wish. And then obviously inside you've got the decals. Um, now, Bandai have got stickers and water slide decals, so you've got a choice of both. Okay. Again, look at the detail on the bottom with the actual motors, etc. Gorgeous. And there's your back panel, wall panel. Absolutely gorgeous. Again, nice work potential for weathering, etc. and washes. Okay. And finally, you've got the other leg mechanism on the final sprue. Obviously, you've got your stickers there. And there's your feeder pipes, etc. Okay. And then on here, more mechanisms again. This is obviously for a rotating the actual cockpit, etc. There's your base, if you want to use that. I mean, I could possibly use it, just put some uh, grass on it. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll sort of weigh it up at the moment. And then obviously you've got your figure of Chewy there. It's not bad um, in this light. As I say, no, nice bit of dry brushing, etc. It'll look good. Okay, and I am going to have Chewy on the top, so there we go. just reenact like the scene from the last of the Jedi. There we go. Is it Return of the Jedi? I should know. I'm a bloody Star Wars fan. I put all six films so far. Is it seven? And I have to say, I cannot wait for Rogue One to come out. And Bandai are already in actually releasing some of the actual figures and some possibly some of the spacecraft that are actually going to be featured in the film. So there you go, guys. That is Bandai's ATST um, from Star Wars: uh, Return of the Jedi. 
and I've got a feeling they're going to be using these. You're going to see these in Rogue One, possibly. I don't know. But we shall see. Anyway, that's the end of my entry video into the Bandai Group build. I um, hope you enjoyed the video and the inbox review. Until the next time, as they say in Star Wars, may the Force be with you. Anyway, and get kick crazy. Happy modelling, and I'll speak to you soon.